Do you know that the world's biggest dome that was constructed more than 500 years ago was built by an amateur? A person who had no formal training as an architect or engineer and was widely mocked and derided when he proposed his design for the dome. His formal training was as a goldsmith and a sculptor. And coming to this dome, it had no central support system to hold it during the construction. And even worse, the dome's base was as an imprecise octagon with no true center. So how did this unlikely character, in spite of all these problems, wind up creating one of the most iconic architectural achievements ever? Are you curious? Then keep watching to know all about Brunelleschi's dome. Filippo Brunelleschi's dome is the dome that covers the Florence Cathedral. Florence Cathedral is arguably the most beautiful building in the entire city of Tuscany and one of the finest Gothic style churches in the world. The ancient structure founded in the early 5th century and having undergone many repairs was crumbling with age and was no longer large enough to serve the growing population of the city. An ambitious reconstruction was proposed. The new church was designed by the architect Arnolfo di Cambio and approved by the city council in 1294. The first stone was laid on 9 September 1296. The building of this vast project was to last for 140 years. After Arnolfo died in 1302, work on the cathedral slowed for almost 50 years. In 1331, the guild of the work merchants took over the patronage for the construction of the cathedral and in 1334, appointed Giotto to oversee the work. Assisted by an Italian sculptor and architect Andrea Pisano, Giotto continued Di Cambio's design. When Giotto died on 8 January 1337, Andrea Pisano continued the building until work was halted due to the Black Death pandemic in 1348. In 1349, work resumed on the cathedral under a series of architects. By 1375, the old church Santa Reparata was pulled down. The name was finished by 1380 and by 1418 only the dome remained incomplete. Proud of their city, the Florentines built a glorious cathedral, reserving enough space in its design for a huge dome. But there was one problem. No one knew how to erect a dome that would be nearly 150 feet wide and that would begin 150 feet above the ground atop to the existing walls. With all the reasons given, Filippo Brunelleschi wasn't exactly the most conventional choice to transform the landscape of Florence. So when the notoriously hot-headed goldsmith won a competition to design a dome for the city's cathedral in 1418, it may have come as a bit of a shock to the public who'd been promised a world-class cupola for the structure decades earlier. Filippo Brunelleschi had no formal training as an architect or engineer and was widely mocked and derided when he proposed his design for the dome. Brunelleschi's out-of-the-box thinking is very likely what put his enduring Italian landmark on the map and helped solidify his reputation as one of the world's most famous innovators in art and engineering. When it was designed, it was the largest dome in the world. This immediately created problems as its size prevented the traditional method of construction. Its structure is a double shell supported by study pillars. The building plans didn't include pointed arches or the use of flying buttresses, which are inclined beams that can carry a half arch projecting from the wall of a structure to a pier that supports the weight of a roof, dome or wall. It was built without any centering support which was traditionally used to support a dome during construction. And it was also built without any buttresses which were commonly used to reinforce domes from spreading. The choice to build the cathedral without buttresses had been made prior to Brunelleschi's winning the competition for the dome. There wasn't enough wood in Tuscany to construct centering to support the dome and so the design of the dome called for an engineer's solution. Luckily, Brunelleschi had it covered. To get around the issue, he proposed building two domes instead of one, that is, one nested inside the other. And as the masonry should support itself, the inner dome was built with four horizontal stone and chain hoops which reinforced the octagonal dome and resisted the outward spreading force that is common to domes. 
eliminating the need for buttresses. A fifth chain made of wood was utilized as well. Only one row a week was laid giving it more time to cure. But how did he place the stone so precisely? Some architects say there must be ropes used for alignment. However it was done, this technique has never been utilized in dome construction before and to this day is still regarded as a remarkable engineering achievement. While Brynelinski's conceptual plan intrigued city officials, he was tight-lipped on the details, refusing to explain his exact strategy for completing the project. Even when he got into a shouting match with the overseas who called him a buffoon and a babbler and had him kicked out of the assembly, he remained quiet. He was forced to work with a rival to whom he had previously lost a high-profile design competition. He left few details about the construction of the dome behind and intentionally concealed the details about its construction to minimize the chance that his mastery could be easily copied. He continued to keep the majority of his creative and construction plans concealed. Since much of the details of the dome are hidden in its walls, there is still some mystery as to how all the components of the domes connect with each other. His vision required a completely new way of thinking about building. Brunelleschi's design not only required creativity in design and engineering, but creativity in construction as well. To build the dome without the centering required the invention of multiple techniques. He invented an ox-driven hoist that brought the tremendously heavy stones up to the level of construction. The hoist was gear-driven with a clutch and that allowed the hoist to be reversed without reversing the direction of the oxen. The platforms for the workers were cantilevered from the walls of the dome and pockets were built in the walls to support these platforms. The accuracy of these pockets is remarkable and it is believed that the platforms needed to be accurate and level so that the geometry of the dome could be recognized by chains and string lines that were used to guide the masons in laying brick. The uncommon building strategies did not stop that. To construct the brick walls of the dome, he employed a pattern that allowed the bricks to self-reinforce as it was being laid, so that the bricks wouldn't fall off the wall as it became more inclined. Brunelleschi even noticed that the marble for the project was being damaged as it was unloaded off of the boats. So he invented an amphibious boat that could be used on the land to transport the large pieces of marble to the cathedral. The dome is decorated with a magnificent cycle of frescoes depicting the Last Judgment. On the whole, the construction of Brunelleschi's brainchild took 16 years to complete although it took another decade for a lantern to be added on. The construction of the dome, which was kicked off in 1420 and was completed in 1436, and the end result was mind-blowing, to say the least. The dome of the Florence Cathedral to this day is the largest masonry dome ever built. It's estimated that it used over 4 million bricks and that the dome weight was over 25,000 tons. Brunelleschi died 10 years after completion of the dome and he was buried in the crypt of the cathedral. The nearby play commemorating his legacy celebrates his divine intellect. And to this day, the unlikely visionary remains as an architectural icon not just in Italy but throughout the world.